Hi, good morning and welcome to the CMH Family Medicine Top Tips and Tutorials. Um, this Today, we're just going to have a brief look at the national guidelines on the treatment of tuberculosis infection that was already published in February of 2023. I also have a full one-hour webinar that goes into a lot more detail, but this is just to pick up on a few of the key points. Um, and the thing with this uh, this guideline is it's, it's sort of the Mercedes-Benz of guidelines. It, it describes an ideal that we would love to follow. The challenge is it's not yet completely funded. So some of the medicines are not necessarily available and certainly some of the support teams to be able to, to get to the reach that this guideline is suggesting is not possible. There's also been some changes in a couple of guidelines in the last year that contradicts some of the things in the um, tuberculosis infection guideline and, and I'll just highlight those. So the idea of the guideline was very much what they call a TB test and treat approach. And what they mean with this is you test for TB and if they don't have TB, then you treat with IPT. So whatever's going to happen, you are, are, are going to put them on, on treatment if it's somebody where you think they, they might have been at risk for TB. So there's been a few big changes. So for people living with HIV, uh, firstly, and that is in all the guidelines, all people living with HIV, adults, children, and more, children more than 14 weeks old, um, and we'll talk about the pregnant woman separately because that's the one where there's a bit of a debate, but certainly everybody who's over the age of 14 weeks um, and who gets diagnosed with HIV is going to get a course of TPT. This guideline also suggests that every time there's a new TB exposure for anybody that might be at risk, so that includes obviously still our under five-year-olds, but they want to include all people with HIV, but they also want to include all HIV negative patients who's had a high risk exposure. So if you've got a patient who's got TB, that you actually cover everybody in the household. And that there might be challenges in terms of our capacity to actually roll that out. Um, and then there's also a specific look at high risk groups, not only HIV, in terms of potentially providing cover for those patients. So firstly, there's now also they've updated the, the definition of what they call significant TB exposure. And it's basically anybody who's shared the same enclosed space for one or more nights or frequent or extended daytime periods. And it's the daytime periods that's becoming quite important. Um, so we also exp uh, expect everybody that's been exposed to that patient in the last three months would be called significant TB exposure. Um, and we do not use the term household contact any longer. Sometimes we'll also ask um, a person if they have been exposed to TB, but then it's a different question. So you've got a patient in front of you and you want to know if they have been exposed and you're going to ask about any exposure in the last 12 months. But if you're trying to identify who this TB patient has exposed, you will look at the last three months. I hope that's clear. So the exciting thing, um, and which made this, this vision possible of let's put everybody on TPT that's had significant exposure, is some of these new drugs. And the exciting one has been the rifapentin and isoniazide combination. So rifapentin doesn't interfere with nearly as many things as rifampicin, so it makes it a nice option. But three months makes it much easier than a whole year, for example, of INH, um, and it's once a week. So the ideal was that you get these lovely little packets of 12 tablets and you can literally give it to everybody in the household, screen them, they don't have TB, they each get their 12 tablets, one tablet a week for three months and you check at the end of the three months if they're okay. Um, I became aware recently at a conference we were discussing this and it doesn't sound like this is available at all, but um, Orem has donated to some depots rifapentin. If you want to do the rifapentin INH um, combination, then it's, um, if you've only got the 100 milligrams isoniazide, it might mean three tablets, or if you've got the 300 milligrams of isoniazide, that dosage for the weekly dose is 600 milligrams of rifapentin and 900 milligrams of INH, which means six tablets of rifapentin and three tablets of INH. So it's nine tablets, which sounds quite dramatic, but it's once a week. So if you do have rifapentin, you can use that up by those patients who couldn't qualify for this particular combination. Um, the other combination is the Refina. So Refina is definitely an option. Um, it's for three months only, which is also much easier than the year. But here our problem comes in with rifampicin that potentially interacts with a whole range of medicines. So there's a limited um, use of scenarios where we can use 3-RH. And then in some patients might qualify for a six-month INH, especially in our contact patients, and then we still have the traditional INH for 12 months um, as we've been using it in the past. And just remember to, to add your pyridoxine. 
So in terms of if you look at your four options, in a, if we looked at a huge public sector program, the 3HP would be amazing. So this is this Iron Age Rifopentin combination, much higher completion rates probably being the biggest reason, um, but accessibility might be an issue. Um, but 12H and the 6H are still very low in adverse events. So they're actually very good long-term options, but the problem is just um, in terms of that whole 12 months that you have to keep the patient on it. So let's look at our, our different scenarios and let's start off with people living with HIV. So these are people who have not been exposed to anybody with TB. We've diagnosed them with HIV and we're now going to give them that routine cover. Um, and so the idea is that we are going to screen all our HIV positive patients on diagnosis with, in, with a gene expert. Um, and then everybody who's now 14 weeks and over is actually going to be qualifying for that um, for TPT of some sort, depending on their age and their weight. So there's also an idea, and this we're not yet doing as actively, that people living with HIV, every time they get exposed to TB, that they have another, um, another set of cover, um, and that we, we will still need to, to de depends a bit on your pro programmatic issue. They do have a guidance on what you do with people who have completed TB treatment, but I have to admit the, the guideline is confusing on this point. So they have this um, statement, you can offer TPT to patients who has had just completed their TB disease, um, and then they've got all kinds of strange provisos. And the bottom line basically is, is if they've never had TPT cover in the past, then you would still do TPT cover when they, cover their, when they finish their TB treatment. If they have had TPT in the past, I'm not too sure that that's not so clear. So pregnant and breastfeeding women, this has been confusing. So there's been various phases that we've gone into. And so at one stage, we do know that there are some issues with INH in the third trimester of pregnancy, especially. Um, and so at one stage, there was used to be a 350 cutoff. So use it in the CD4s under 350, we give TPT. If it's over 350, defer. Um, then the TPT guideline from February 2023 became much more um, open to, the, to putting everybody, all pregnant and breastfeeding women, um, on TPT regardless of the CD4 count. And there has been some concerns around the safety of actually doing that. Um, so there's now looking at a, a new guideline that's coming out, the new Advanced HIV Disease Guidelines. And there's now massive discussion to harmonize with an NMLC study, and all the NMLC studies showed us what there are is a risk um, of using INH in pregnancy. And so, to, for pragmatic reasons, we'll say, well, let's not give anybody TPT. Um, concerned that the CD4 of 350 is going to cause too much confusion. So, this is an ongoing discussion, and this has not yet been clarified. Um, and one needs to make a, a, harm, a risk harm benefit discussion or decision when you are seeing pregnant women. So I'm apologies, we do not have clarity on this point yet. Then if we look at what treatment do we give to our people living with HIV who now qualify for that course of TPT. So in our little children, they do actually also recommend that we cover the newborns. This could be also something that could be more under discussion because remember these children have not been exposed to TB but it's partly, I guess, to cover them if they do get exposed to TB. The important thing is you will wait until they're 14 weeks of age. So even if you diagnose them at birth, you're going to wait until they're 14 weeks old, and then they'll just get six months of the INH. None of the other drugs are an option because it's going to be interfering um, with, their, with their ARVs. Once they're over 25 kilograms, um, both children and adults, we can use the 12 months of INH. So the interesting thing about this HP combination is that they recommend that you do not use it unless the viral load is suppressed. So you would normally want people to have been on the TLD at say six months, but it actually means at least until the viral load is suppressed. So if they've been on it for at least three months, you've got a suppressed viral load, then only can you use the 3HP. So in practice, it's not really practical for most of our patients um, with HIV because when we diagnose them with HIV, we usually start them on the ARVs as well as the the um, their TPT at the same time. So in the majority of cases, we're probably still going to use the 12H. Um, and then, as I've said, with pregnant and breastfeeding women, we are going to have to wait for clarity on what the scenario for that is. And the second option is how we manage contacts. So, and as I say, this guideline is very, um, uh, they want everybody, all contacts, to be receiving some sort of cover. And I'll just show you what it looks like. In terms of small children, and these are children under 25 kilograms, yes, we do still cover all of those contacts. 
So let's just talk about newborns. So these are newborns who's been exposed to a mom who's had TB. And you can see there the, the definition of exposures at the bottom there. So this is any mom who's had TB in the last two months of a pregnancy or a mom who's not been responding to her TB treatment or you know she's still smear or culture positive. Those babies all have to be covered. But just notice we've got a little bit more options for our HIV negative babies. So for HIV positive babies, we're still going to do the six um, the six months of I and H. But with our HIV negative babies or our HIV in, unexposed babies, the, the refiner is, is actually um, an option. If they're weighing less than 25 kilograms, um, HIV negative babies, um, then obviously the ARVs is not an issue. Um, and those babies, therefore, the, the refiner is a, is a very nice option. And then HIV positive, less than 25 kilograms still, um, and it's also all your contacts. We're going to use that six months of INH again because of the interference with refiner with the ARV, so we can't use that. If we then look at older children, so again, these are contacts. Um, for, I think mostly we still definitely cover the kids under five, and then you'll have to use your discretion for HIV negative patients who are over the age of five who's had significant TB exposure. So if they weigh more than 25 kilograms and they're HIV negative, then we would love to use that with a pent and iron age combination. Um, and again, you can use whatever you have availability to in your area. If not, then you're probably going to use the 12H. If they're more than 25 kilograms um, and they're HIV positive, then we can only use that with a pentan iron age combination if the viral load is suppressed. So it might be an option or otherwise also just a 12H. And again, we're still confused about pregnant and breastfeeding women. So thank you very much. Um, and please, for much more detail, do see the full TPT guideline as well as the, um, as the full webinar.